most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat. I'm with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way. I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess a new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other world. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv. You're listening to Revolution Radio. It's a great honor for me to be here with all of you and to have your attention and to be able to share the things that I've come to know. And those of you that are familiar with my work, you know that I read and study and give a lot of my time to the research of extra biblical, extra canonical materials and in doing so I have been led to revelation which is largely I believe misunderstood misrepresented and also undeservingly condemned in opposition and that the things that I've come to know, the things I've come to teach, even though they are contrary to majority opinion, still, according to the ancient manuscripts, they are verified multiple times over from many different sources and many different witnesses. And yet... Because these things are not attested to by pastors and preachers and ministers and Sunday schools and seminaries and mainstream Christianity, they are believed to be heretical when the opposite is actually true. And what we see accepted by mainstream Christianity is not only far from truth, but also connected to idolatry and paganism and to not reverence of the Most High God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but to deception and to diverted worship that Satan has established worldwide belief and also uh, the worship of the fallen ones. Legion, the eye at the top of the Illuminati pyramid, which we see on the currency uh, American dollars and all the various nominations of currency, you see that all of that is Masonically influenced and that the Masons are connected, that they are truly the blood lineage of the devil and that they are what Christ referred to as the den of vipers and those that conspired not only his murder but historically throughout the generations the murders and the assassinations of the prophets and of those that speak truth and this is still ongoing in this day and age and though during his lifetime it was fulfilled in the murder of Zacharias, the high priest, 
They even murdered him in the Holy of Holies, where only the most holy and the individual that represented the prophet of the Most High God. And that we see even the murder of John the Baptist, who was the son of Zacharias, and deservingly the rightful high priest after his father's murder. And yet they beheaded John as well and then began to hunt and murder the apostles of Christ. And so they have always been and are recognized and pointed out to be the assassins of the people of God. And so this is one of the teachings that few understand that everybody, all the people in the world all believe that we're of one happy family when the truth is there are and has always been two different peoples here upon the earth. One inclined to goodness and innocence and to empathically wanting to extend goodwill and beneficence and to provide environment where children can be nurtured in joy and in love. But that truly there is a people here who are committed and naturally dispossessed to evil and they have an inclination to wickedness and as long as the world continues to ignore the presence of this evil and this family this bloodline and these people that take a blood oath to commit murder and to conspire the slaughter of innocents. As long as we continue to believe that we're all one people and that, you know, one tribe, one family, one earth, we will continue to be steamrolled by the presence of this evil and slaughtered at every turn of the way because they are conspiring murder on all levels and that includes the food the water the air I mean everything now has been utilized as means to decimate the children of humanity and to wage war against God and his people that the angels care not even if their own people suffer and succumb to disease or to um, pain and suffering that their, their only purpose is to slaughter humanity to such degree that none of the children, none of the humans, the human race, survive to inherit the positions that they abandoned so very long ago when they decided to take up arms and to wage war against the Creator. Which, I mean... How foolish, how stupid, how arrogant, and yet they are still preoccupied with such desire. 
And so this evening, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and come from the standpoint of the perk de Rabbi Eliezer, which was a, a book that I read from a couple weeks back in speaking about the formation, the establishment of the creation and the account that is provided within it, which is unique to the revelation of biblical cosmology as I have shared it in the three-book trilogy on the flat earth as key to decrypt the book of Enoch, the firmament vaulted dome of the earth, and paradise sides in the north and the mount of the congregation. That three, these three books and the revelations contained within them, which there literally are hundreds of extracted quotations from a wide variety of sources which confirm these things. For instance, that the earth is fixed, stationary, and non-moving. And that it was created as a circular plane inscribed upon the waters of the deep. And that this circle was etched out of a square. Which is why it speaks of the earth as having four corners. And that the ends of the earth are where the waves of the oceans are stayed and kept. That the, uh, the earth is much like a basin, a bathtub, and that all the water is held by the deep. And I explain all of this in great detail and show and expound upon the narrative of the Genesis timeline of the earth and the heavens being established. Then you see that the earth was destroyed by the war in heaven and had to be recreated. And that we see on the, the third day after the firmament is put into place and fitted to what is the structure of the firmament, that the dry land is elevated above sea level, above the waters of the deep, and that all the world's oceans come together to form one horizon from end to end. And then the, the another one of the keys is that the sun, the moon, the stars, the luminaries, they being created on the fourth day were placed into and hold circuit within the tabernacle of the sky and what we call outer space. And so these are things to, if you're going to study the prophetic word of the Most High God as inspired by divine mind, these are things that one has to consider in the scope of reading and studying the prophetic word. And so this evening we're going to look at some examples, some passages, which can also be found in the extra canonical materials, which verify the premise of what is revealed in the Perk D. Rabbi Eliezer, which um, in sharing in the show that I did last week, in reading from this particular text, I explained that some of my most favorite 
extra biblical sources, including the perk. Again, the Rabbi Eleazar. That some of some of the other books that I like the most is because they have numerous footnotes and they cite ancient sources which are since disappeared and lost to public consideration. And that reading and studying these ancient viewpoints that one can be led to truth in a way that has been largely lost to the collective as far as world. And so one of the reasons I like reading books like the Chronicles of Jeremiah, the Legends of the Jews, the Asatir, A-S-A-T-I-R, uh, the Book of the Secrets of Moses, the Kebra Nagas, K-E-B-R-A space N-A-G-A-S-T, the Kebra Nagas, which means the glory of kings, that these particular events um, that people in reading and studying them can learn a great deal that most people do not know about. And that details on a lot of what remains ambiguous within the biblical text as far as the King James version of the Bible that truth can be gleaned and familiarity with things that have been long lost, forgotten, and extirpated from what was common knowledge in ancient times, that these kind of things can help one to better understand the scriptures in a way that, you know, reality can be understood. And so... Tonight will be a continuation of that just on a a different theme. And so we'll go ahead and get into the text. The Perk D Rabbi Eleazar is spelled P I R K E space D E space Rabbi R A B B I space L E A Z A R L E E A-Z-A-R, Eleazar. It says this about the fall of the angels. In the beginning, before the creation of heaven and earth, God made the angels free intelligences and free wills. Out of his love, he made them that they might be eternally happy and that their Happiness might be complete. He gave them the perfection of a created nature. That is, he gave them freedom. Which, you know that, and and as I've spoken about that, God gave us all free will, angels and humanity, and that we were part of the sons of God before incarnation into flesh form. But that um, the reason God gave us free will and allowed even the angels to rebel and also Adam and Eve and for humanity to be born into mortal, mortal flesh form was to show us as a world why it is that we need his sovereignty to rule over world. For without it, things would get crazy and out of hand and chaos would ensue. And this is exactly what we see 
happening over time in this world and that God revealed it to us within the scripture, within the word, showed it to us as to not only the rebellion of the angels, but our own rebellion and that of Israel, his chosen people. And that he had to send his son into mortal form to give up his own life and to show us how deeply loved we are and that it would be through that sacrifice of his only begotten son as the Passover lamb without spot or blemish that in that manner we could be redeemed and that through grace we could be saved and that the world could be saved. Those that truly believed. And so that is part of the the whole story. All right, continue. And that their happiness might be complete, he gave them the perfection of a created nature. That is, he gave them freedom. But happiness is only attained by the free will agreeing in its freedom to accord with the will of God. Some of the angels, by an act of free will, obeyed the will of God and in such obedience formed perfect happiness. Other angels, by an act of free will, rebelled against the will of God and in such disobedience found misery. Historically, it is represented as a war in heaven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed. Not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The reason of the revolt was that Satan desired to be as great as God. Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. And so, you know, a lot of people believe and teach that this war in heaven is going to happen in the future. But the truth being is that this happened in the ancient past. And this was one of the first things, one of the first choices of Satan and Legion. And that this was the moment that iniquity being found within him led to the strife and to the division of light and darkness that led to the separation of the forces of light and darkness, of good and evil. And so it's important to understand that because otherwise you really you can't understand the greater um, as to what had happened in the past that led to even the ancient exile of the fallen angels and the banishment of the seraphim angels to this world and to this realm. 
and that the fallen ones were here long before we ever arrived upon the scene. And so understanding that one aspect of the historicity of world, one can then make sense of what we see in the ancient archaeological record. And even in the oral traditions of indigenous peoples worldwide, the work of ancient historians like Mantheo and Barosis, who were, you know, so widely and highly respected in that they were two of the individuals that, you know, in the instance of Barosis, that Alexander the Great asked him, to write, to write down in recollection the story of the ancient times, the prior times. And he did so. And even his testimony being so ancient, it is largely lost and only found replicated in the quotations and the works of others and in studying those manuscripts and those teachings we can you know piece together along with what is revealed in the scriptures and the other mythological uh, legendary stories and tales worldwide an account that actually makes sense and fits with the archaeological, the geological and the anthropological record of our world continuing the war ended in the fall of Satan and those whom he had led into apostasy and to this fall are referred the words of Christ. I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven. And indeed, this is a very important that confirmation that Christ as the pre-existing part of the pre-existing Godhead of the self existent eternal one that he was all the way back then and that he saw even the destruction of the world that then was as Peter describes it and Jude and Job and others and so Again, very important to understand that this event happened very long time in our ancient past. And in, it is, yes, it's still future as well that the ongoing war in heaven is continued through the enmity between the seed lines. And that, too, is another very important part of the story. All right. Let me... Um, hello, Malev and Shelly, Stephanie. Thank you for joining us. Um, all right, let me continue with the reading because I have so much I want to cover. And then um, after I get a little bit into this, this particular account I'm going to share some other aspects from other ancient sources which not only verify what is written here but it will help you to get greater clarity on what I'm talking about because you know again a lot of people don't have this understanding and are not aware of these 
sources that I will share with you this evening, especially for those of you that are still, you know, that are new to my work, which there are many of you that are being led to consider the possibilities of those things that I've written and have done shows on and that have read. And so even though I have covered some of these issues in other accounts, still I want to, you know, present greater clarity so that you can understand these esoteric concepts in better elucidation. I, Fabricius, in his collection of the apocryphal writings of the Old Testament, has preserved the song of triumph which the archangel Michael sang on attaining the victory. This, in a portion of it, quote, Glory to our God, praise to his holy name. He is our God. Glory be to him. He is our Lord. His be the triumph. He has stretched forth his right hand. He has manifested his power. He has cast down our adversaries. They are mad who resist him. They are accursed who depart from his commandments. He knoweth all things and cannot err. His will is sovereignly just, and all that he wills is good. All that he advises is holy. Supreme intelligence cannot be deceived. Perfect being cannot will what is evil. Nothing is above that which is supreme. Nothing is better than that which is perfect. None is worthy besides him, but him who whom he has made worthy. He must be loved above all things and adored as the eternal king. You have abandoned your God. You have revolted against him. You have desired to be God. You have fallen from your high estates. You have gone down like a fallen stone. Acknowledge that God is great, that his works are perfect and that his judgments are just glory be to God through ages of ages praises of joy for all his works this song of the archangel is said to have been revealed to S. Amadeus according to Talmudus, Satan, whose proper name is Samael, which Samael is the angel of death, and also the name of the serpent in Genesis 3, 6, where it says, you know, about the serpent that he was subtle uh, in the Targum, it's subtle to the inclinations of evil. But in other places, it's subtle to knowing good and evil. Whose proper name is Samael was one of the seraphim with six wings. He was not driven out of heaven till after he had led Adam and Eve into sin. And then Samael and his hosts were precipitated out of the place of bliss with God's curse to weigh them down 
in the struggle between Michael and Samael. The falling seraph caught the wings of Michael and tried to drag him down with him, but God saved him. Whence Michael derives his name, the rescued. This is what Rabbi Bakai says in the commentary on the five books of Moses. Um, let me read one other thing. And then I'll read some ancient sources. But this is important because, again, the even though a lot of people teach that, you know, the fall of the angels, the rebel angels and Lucifer did not occur until after the creation of Adam. This is, in fact, untrue. Uh, and we see that in the book of Enoch, it is revealed that they were cast out on the second day. And it was because of the war in heaven, which led to the destruction of the earth. And so, continuing, it says, According to authority, the apostate angels, having fallen in a heap, God laid his little finger on them and consumed them. Samael was the regent of the planet Mars, and this he rules still. And therefore, it is that those born under the influences of that star are lovers of war and given to strife. He was chief among the angels of God, and now he is prince among devils. His name is derived from Simi, which means to blind and deceive. He stands on the left side of men. He goes by various names, such as the old serpent, the unclean spirit, Satan, Leviathan, and sometimes also Azazel. In his fall, he spat in his hatred against God, and his spittle stained the moon, and thus it is that the moon has on its spots. After his fall, Satan took to himself four wives, Lilith and Nama, the daughter of Lamech, and sister of Tubal-Cain, Igareth and Amakshalath. Each became the mother of a great host of devils, and each rules with their host over a season of the year. And at the change of seasons, there is great gathering of devils about their mothers. Lilith is followed by 478 legions of devils. For that number is comprised in her name, 478. According to Sim, Lilith is identical with Eve. She rules over Damascus, Nama over Tyre, Igareth over Malta, and Rhodes and Mashalath over Crete. Many traditions date the existence of the angels and demons from a remote period before the creation of the world. But some connect the fall of Satan and his host with the creation of man. Abu Dajarfar Muhammad Tabari says that when God made Adam, he bade all the angels worship him as the kings as the king and superior as says the Quran all the angels adored Adam but that Satan or Iblis answered God I will not adore Adam for he is made of earth and I of fire therefore I am better than he and that God thereupon cursed Iblis and gave him the form of a devil because of his pride vain confidence, and disobedience. Just a little more, and I'm going to read a couple other things. After he had inspired Adam with his spirit, all the angels of every degree adored him except he bliss. He, through pride and envy, scorned to do this and disobeyed God. Then God cursed him 
and he cut him off from all hope in divine mercy. And he called him Shaitan, Satan devoted to misery. And he cast him out, who had been before an angel of the earth and keeper of terrestrial things and a guardian of paradise. But the general opinion seems to have been that the fall of the angels preceded the creation of man. Ibn Ezra dates it on the second day of creation. Others on the first day when God divided the light from the darkness. Manasseh ben Israel says that God has placed the devils in the clouds that they might torment the wicked with thunder and lightnings and showers of hail and tempests of wind and that this took place on the second day when the firmament was divided. And that, in fact, is the premise that I have also come to and that I verify in my 11th book, The Great Contest Won, War in Heaven. One final passage and then we'll go into some of the other ancient sources. As the fall of Satan took place through his aspirations to be God, so it is closely connected with the origin of idolatry and false worship. For now that Satan is cast out of heaven, he still seeks to exalt himself into the place of God and therefore leads men from the worship of the true God into demon knowledge. Thus the gods of the heathen were regarded by the first Christians as devils aspiring to receive that worship from men on earth which they sought and failed to obtain in heaven. Thus St. Paul tells the Corinthians that the Gentiles sacrifice to devils. The temptation of Christ can only be fully understood when we bear in mind that pride and craving for worship is the prime source of Satan's actions. All these will I give thee, he said to Christ, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. It was a second attempt by Satan to set himself above the Most High. Among the heathen traditions of the angelic apostasy and war have remained. All right. I can share one quote. And I said before the break, and I said, Lord, before Satan fell, what was his glory besides your father's? Let me actually... Check the volume. Yeah, we're still good. All right. And he told me such was his glory that he governed the virtues of heaven. As for me, I said next to my father, Satan was the master of all those who imitated the father. And his power descended from the sky to the inferno and rose again from the inferno to the throne of the invisible father. And he observed the glory of him who transformed the skies and he dreamed of placing his seat on the clouds of heaven because he wanted to be like the very high. When he descended farther down, he found himself in the presence of clouds weighing on the tidal waves of the sea. He went on until he got to his awesome 
which is the principle of fire. And after that, he could not descend farther because of the intense flame of fire. And then Satan came in from behind and filled his own heart with malice. And reaching the angel of the air and the one who was above the waters, he said to them, everything belongs to me. If you listen to me, I will place my seat on the clouds and I shall be similar to the very high. I will withdraw the waters of the upper firmament and assemble all the areas occupied by the sky with one entity of vast sea. That done, there will be no water on the face of the entire earth and I shall reign with you through the centuries of the centuries. I think I have time for one more. But now, O oh Adam, we will make known to you what came over us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his host and deceived them, promising to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His host believed that his word was true. So they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. He then sent for us according to the orders which in which we were to come under his command and to accept his vain promise, but we would not and we did not take his advice. Then after he had fought with God and had dealt forwardly with him, he gathered together his hosts and made war with us. And if it had not been for God's strength that was with us, we could not have prevailed against him to hurl him from heaven. But when he fell from among us, there was great joy in heaven because of his going down from us. For if he had remained in heaven, nothing, not even one angel would have remained in it. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. I'll, I'll finish um, this quote when we come back from break. I'm not going to be able to finish the final paragraph, but I do hope that, you know, me piecing together and compiling all of these ancient sources helps you to better understand the timing of the war in heaven and when it occurred. We'll be right back for a second hour. All right, welcome back, everybody. I am going to finish up the quote that I was reading. It's from chapter 55 of the first book of Adam and Eve. And as as stated previously in the first two paragraphs of this quote, it's a recollection that one of the archangels is telling Adam about the ancient war in heaven that occurred previous to his temptation and fall and his exile here to the earth where the fallen ones had already been cast down and banished. And so, you know, again, this is a confirming witness to the fact in my opinion, that the war in heaven again occurred in very ancient times. And we see also confirmation of this in the book of the secrets of Enoch. Which, um, let's, uh, I'll, I'll share this with you and then I'll actually read the entire quote again from the first book of Adam and Eve. Because I think it's very important. And understanding the context of both of these passages, you'll see that indeed the banishment of Lucifer and the one-third of the angels of the Most High, which joined him in rebellion, 
occurred in our very ancient past, before what is the last 6,000 years of this second world age. It says, and one from the order of angels, having turned away with the order that was under him, conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth that he might become equal in rank to my power. And I threw him out from the height with his angels. And he was flying in the air continuously above the bottom. And this was on the second day. You can get confirmation of this in the book of the secrets of Enoch. Chapters 29 and 30. If you read the context of what is revealed there, that it becomes clear. All right, and so let's reconsider this passage from the book of Enoch. And we can break down what the archangel is telling to Adam. He says, but now, O oh Adam, we will make known to you what came over us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his host and deceived them, promising to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His host believed that his word was true, so they yielded to him and renounce the glory of God. He then sent for us according to the orders in which we were to come under his command and to accept his vain promises. But we would not, and we did not take his advice. Then after he had Fought with God, and he had dealt forwardly with him. He gathered together his hosts and made war with us. And if it had not been for God's strength that was with us, we could not have prevailed against him to hurl him from heaven. But when he fell from among us, there was great joy in him because of his going down. For if he had remained in heaven, nothing, not even one angel, would have remained in it. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to the dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. So here, you know, it's telling us that Satan was cast out of heaven, banished here to the earth because of his becoming dark like the earth. He had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. And so this is before the creation of Adam and his fall and exile here to the earth. And so the fallen angels and legion, because of the war in heaven, they were cast out and banished here to this world. Long before humanity even you know, part of the circumstances of this world. But this final paragraph is very important as well. It says, and he has continued, O oh Adam, to make war against you until he tricked you and made you come out of the garden to this strange land where all these trials have come to you. And death, which God brought to him, he has also brought to you, O oh Adam, because you obeyed him and trespassed against God. Then all the angels 
rejoiced and praised God and asked him not to destroy Adam this time for his having sought to enter the garden, but to bear with him until the fulfillment of the promise and to help him in this world until he was free from Satan's hand. And so we see that Satan indeed is waging war on Adam and that he is multiplying uh, murder and malice against Adam and that death was brought also upon legion as it says in Psalms 82 that they would die the death of a man. And so, you know, again, we have to consider that something had happened in ancient times that led to the banishment of the fallen ones to this world and that they have been here and have inherited and were here before we were. Okay, I want to share one other thing with you. Well, actually, two other things with you. And I should have plenty of time. But one is from the Gospel of Bartholomew when Christ gives him the authority to go up and to confront Satan as Beliar and to ask him, about his rebellion and about his war against the children of man, the sons of Adam. And this is the, the answer that he gives him is very important because it shows to us that, uh, well, first it speaks about the preexistence of Christ. And also it's a confirmation of John chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word was with God, was God, and uh, without Him, you know, nothing was manifest, nothing was created, and that all things have been created through Him, and that He was the light of men, meaning that He is the indwelling Spirit, Actually, it's the Holy Spirit, which he and the Holy Spirit and the Father are all one. But the nefesh, the breath of life, is the Holy Spirit. And that is within us, within all of us. That is the aspect of the Godhead, which living and dwelling within us is the immortal aspect of who we will become after death. And it's that portion of us that goes on to salvation and eternity. But anyways, listen to what is cited here. It says, For if I were able, I would have destroyed you like one of them that were before you. For indeed, I was formed the first angel, for when God made the heavens, he took a handful of fire and formed me first, Michael second, for the he had his son before the heavens and the earth, and we were formed for when he took thought to create all things, his son spake a word so that we also were created by the will of the Son and the consent of the Father. He formed, I say, first me, next Michael, the chief captain of the hosts that are above, Gabriel third, Uriel fourth, Raphael fifth, Nathaniel sixth, and other angels of whom I cannot tell the names. And so you see that, you know, Basically, Satan, Beliar, is telling Bartholomew that he and the other archangels were created by Christ. 
that you know they were manifest by the sun and that he was the first of the archangels to be created all right let me continue with this quote because it's it's interesting all right so he formed i say first me next michael the chief captain of the host that are above gabriel third uriel fourth raphael fifth nathaniel sixth and other angels of whom i cannot tell the names and for they are the rod bearers the lictors of god and they smite me with their rods and pursue me seven times in the night and seven times in the day and leave me not at all and break in pieces all my power these are the angels of the vengeance which stand before the throne of god these are the angels that were first formed and after them were formed all the angels in the first heaven are a hundred myriads that satan tells us that he was created first and that it was the sun that had created him and i'll read this again just in case you missed it for indeed i was formed the first angel need to confirm this again okay I was formed the first angel for when God made the heavens he took a handful of fire and formed me first Michael second for he had his son before the heavens and the earth and we were formed for when he took thought to create all things his son spake a word so that we also were created by the will of the son and the consent of the father and then speaking about the angels and after them were formed all the angels in the first heaven are a hundred myriads and in the second a hundred myriads and in the third and hundred myriads and in the fourth a hundred myriads and the fifth and a hundred myriads and in the sixth a hundred myriads the seventh is the first firmament it is a flat surface wherein are the powers which work upon men bartholomew saith unto him flow chastise thou the souls of men beliar saith unto him with wilt thou that i declare unto thee the punishment of the hypocrites of the backbiters of the jesters of the idolaters of the covetous and the adulterers the wizards the diviners and of them that believe in us and of all whom i look upon i deceive when will will i show any illusion by them but they that do these things and that they consent unto them or follow them do perish with me and so satan knows he's deceiving people leading them astray and that they will fall with him at the end of days all right one final passage and this is from paradise lost which was written in the 16th century by john milton and i do believe that this book was inspired in some manner that god had given john milton a revelation of the prior times and that he also understood as is revealed in the scriptures that are read and as i share in the great contest 1 the war in heaven that this war occurred in very ancient times and as i also speak about in my book that as it's we see in genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 11 verse 2 and 3 that god created the heavens and the earth and then the spirit of god which is the holy spirit hovered upon the waters of the deep and then in the third verse we see that god said light be or let there be light 
And this light was Christ. It Christ was given in that moment dominion of the creation and of the angelic hierarchy. That he was introduced to them as the light of the world. And it was also in that moment that the creation became visible. And, you know, the Book of the Bee, chapter 6, speaks about this, of the effused light coming into being. And that the angels, which were sitting in darkness up until that time, they recognized the voice that called forth the light as the Father and their Creator. And that the light was the only begotten Son of God and that he, being the Son of God, had dominion over all of the angels. And the only one that did not recognize it or refused to recognize it and accept it was Satan, the who became the adversary. That wanting to be like the Most High that he decided to overthrow or try to overthrow Christ. And that's when he went and began to tempt all of the angels, that he led a rebellion and conspired it. And because of that, he lost his first estate. And so I want to share with you this final story from Paradise Lost. And know that, you know, the language is a little King James-like with thou's and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, high matter thou enjoinest me, O prime of men. Sad task and hard, for how shall I relate to human sense the invisible exploits of warring spirits? How, without remorse, the ruin of so many glorious once and perfect while they stood, how last unfold the secrets of another world? Perhaps not lawful to reveal yet for thy good this is dispensed and what surmounts the reach of human sense I shall delineate so that by lightning spiritual to corporeal forms likening as may express them best though what if earth be but the shadow of heaven and things therein each to other like more than on earth as though is thought as yet this world was not and chaos wild reigned where these heavens now roll where earth now rests upon her center poised when on a day for time, though in eternity, applied to motion, measures all things durable by present, past, and future. On such day as heaven's great year brings forth thy imperial host of angels by imperial summons called, innumerable before the Almighty's throne, Forthwith from all the ends of heaven appeared under their hierarchs in order bright ten thousand thousand ensigns, high advanced standards and gonfalons twixt van and rear stream in the air and for distinction serve of hierarchies of orders and degrees. Or in thy glittering tissue bear emblazed holy memorials, acts of zeal and love, recorded eminent. Thus when in orbs of circuit 
inexpressible they stood, orb within orb the Father infinite, by whom in bliss in bosom sat the sun, amidst as from a flaming mount, whose top brightness had made invisible, thus spake, Hear all ye angels, progeny of light, thrones, dominions, princedoms, virtues, powers, hear my decree, which unrevoked shall stand. This day I have begot, whom I declare my only Son, and on this holy hill him have anointed, whom ye now behold. At my right hand, your head, I will him appoint. And by myself have I sworn to him, shall bow all knees in heaven, and shall confess him Lord under his great vice regent. Reign, abide, united as one individual soul, forever happy. Him who disobeys me, disobeys, breaks union, and that day cast out from God and blessed vision, falls into utter darkness, deep engulfed, his place ordained without redemption and without end. So if you did not understand all that, the Father is introducing here the Son to the angels and giving him dominion. And he warns them to, you know, not uh, revolt against his word because he'll cast them to utter darkness. All right. So spake thy omnipotent and with his words all seemed well, lest all seemed but were not all. That day, as other solemn days, they spent in song and dance about the sacred hill, mystical dance which yonder starry sphere of planets and of fixed in all her wheels resembles nearest mazes, intricate, eccentric, intervolved, yet regular, then most, when most irregular they seem, and in their motions, harmony divine, so smooths her charming tones that God's own ear listens delighted. Evening now approach, for we have also our evening in our morn. We are as for change delectable, not need. Forthwith from dance to sweet repaced, repassed, they turn, desirous, all in circles as they stood, tables are set, and on a sudden piled with angels' food, and rubied nectar flows in pearl, in diamond and massy gold, fruit of delicious vines, the growth of heaven, on flowers reposed, and with fresh florets crowned, they ate, they drank, and in communion, sweet quaff immortal and joy, secure a surfeit were full measure, only bounds excess before thy all bounteous king, who showered with copious hand, rejoicing in their joy. All right, I'm gonna, I know we're gonna run out of time, so I'm gonna skip down a little bit to the rebellion of Satan. Because this will set the premise again for the war in heaven. And it shows you that it was the the son being given dominion, being crowned and given authority over the angels that led him to rebel. All right. Dispersed in bands and files, their camp extend by living streams. Among the trees of life, pavilions numberless, and sudden reared celestial tabernacles, where they slept fanned with cool winds, 
save those who in their course melodious hymns about the sovereign throne alternate all night long but not so wake satan so call him now his former name is heard no more in heaven he of the first if not the first archangel great in power in favor and in preeminence yet fraught with envy against the son of god that day honored by his great father and proclaimed messiah king anointed could not bear through pride that sight and thought himself impaired deep malice then conceiving and disdain soon as midnight brought on the dislike the dusk hour friendliest to sleep and silence he resolved with all his legions to dislodge and leave unworshipped unobeyed the throne supreme contemptuous and his next subordinate awakening thus to him in secret spake sleepest thou companion dear what sleep can close thy eyelids and rememberest what decree of yesterday so late hath passed thy lips of heaven almighty though to me thy thoughts was wont i mind to thee was wont to impart both waking we were one how then can now thy sleep descend new laws thou seest imposed new laws from him who reigns new minds may raise in us who serve new councils to debate what doubtful may ensue more in this place to utter is not safe assemble thou of all these myriads which we lead the chief tell them that by command ere yet dim night here shadow cloud withdraws i am to haste and all who under me their banners wave homeward with flying march were we possess the quarters of the north there to prepare fit entertainment to receive our king the great messiah and his new commands who speedily through all the hierarchies intends to pass triumphant and give laws so spake the false archangel and infused bad influence into the unaware breast of his associate he together calls or several one by one the regent powers under him regent tells as he was taught that the most high commanding now ear night now ear dim night had dis- encumbered heaven the great hierarchical standards was to move tell the suggested cause and cast between ambiguous words and jealousies to sound or taint integrity but all obeyed the wanted signal and superior voice o oh, their great potentate for great indeed his name and high was his degree in heaven his countenance as the morning star that guides the starry flock allured them and with eyes drew after him the third part of heaven's host meanwhile the eternal eye whose sight discerns abstrusest thoughts for forth his holy mount and from within the golden lamps that burning nightly before him saw without their light rebellion rising saw in whom how spread among the sons of morn what multitude were banded to oppose his high decree and smiling to his only son thus said son thou in whom my glory i behold in full resplendence heir of all my might nearly it now concerns us to be sure of our omnipotence and with what arms we mean to hold what anciently 
we claim of deity and empire. Such a foe is rising who intends to erect his throne equal to ours throughout the spacious north, nor so content hath in his thought to try in battle what our power is or our right. Let us advise and to this hazard draw with speed what force is left and all employ in our defense lest unawares we lose this our high place. Our sanctuary, our hill, to whom the sun with calm aspect and clear lightning divine, ineffable, serene, made answer. Mighty Father, though thy foes justly hast in derision and secure, laughest at thy vern, thy vain designs, and tumults vain, Matter to me of glory, whom their hate illustrates when they see all real power given to me to quell their pride. And in event I know whether I be dexterous to subdue thy rebels or be found the worst in heaven. So spake the Son, but Satan with his powers far was advanced on winged speed and host innumerable as the stars of night or stars of morning, dewdrops which the sun imperils on every leaf and every flower. Regions they passed, the mighty regencies of seraphim and potentates and thrones in their triple degrees. Regions to which all thy dominion, Adam, is no more than what this garden is to all the earth and all the sea. From one entire globos stretched into longitude, which having passed at length into the limits of the north, they came and Satan to his royal seat, high on a hill, far blazing, as a mount raised on a mount, with pyramids and towers from diamond quarries, hewn and rocks of gold, the palace of great Lucifer, so called that structure in the dialect of men, interpreted which not long after, he affecting all equally with God in imitation of that mount whereon Messiah was declared in sight of heaven, the mountain of the congregation called, for thither he assembled all his train, pretending so commanded to consult about the great reception of their king, thither to come and with calumnious art of counterfeited truth thus held their ears, thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, if these magnified titles yet remain, not merely titular, since by decree another now hath to himself engrossed all power, and us eclipsed under the name of king anointed, for whom all this haste of midnight march and hurried meeting here, this only to consult how we may best with what may be devised of honors new, receive him coming to receive from us knee tribute, yet unpaid, prostration vile, too much to one, but double how endured, to one and to his image now proclaimed. But what if better counsels might erect our minds and teach us to cast off this yoke Will ye submit your necks and choose to bend the subtle knee? Ye will not, if I trust to know ye right. Or if ye know yourselves, natives and sons of heaven, possessed before 
by none, and if not equal, all, yet free, equally free, for orders and degrees jar not with liberty, but well consist. Who can in reason then or right assume monarchy over such as live by right? His equals, if in power and splendorless, in freedom equal, or can introduce law and edict on us, who without law ear not, much less for this to be our Lord, and look for adoration to the abuse of those imperial titles which assert our being ordained to govern, not to serve, Thus far his bold discourse without control had audience. When among the seraphim, Abdiel, then whom none, with more zeal adored the deity and divine commands obeyed, stood up and in a flame of zeal, severe the current of his fury, thus opposed. O oh, argument blasphemous, false and proud, words which no care ever to hear in heaven, expected least of all from thee. In great, in place thyself so high above thy peers, canst thou with impious oblique condemn the just decree of God, pronounced and sworn that to his only son by right endued with regal, Scepter, every soul in heaven shall bend the knee, and in that honor do confess him rightful king. Unjust thou said, flatly unjust, to bind with laws the free, and equal over equal to let reign, one over all with unsucceeded power. Shalt thou give law to God? Shalt thou dispute with him the points of liberty? who made thee what thou art, and formed the powers of heaven, such as he placed and circumscribed their being. Yet by experience taught we now how good, and of our good, and of our dignity, how provident he is, how far from thought to make us less, bent rather to exalt our happy state, under one head, more near united, but to grant it the unjust, that equal over equal monarch reign, thyself though great and glorious, dost thou count, or all angelic nature joined in one, equal to him begotten son, by whom, as by his word, the mighty father made all things, even thee and all the spirits of heaven by him created in their bright degrees, crowned them with glory and to their glory named thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, essential powers, nor by his reign obscured, but more illustrious made since he, the head one of our number, Thus reduced becomes his laws, our laws. All honors to him done returns our own. Cease then this impious rage and tempt not these, but hasten to appease thy incensed father and thy incensed son while pardon may be found in time besought. So spake the fervent angel but his zeal none seconded, as out of season judged, or singular and rash, whereat rejoiced thy apostate, and more haughty, thus replied, that we were formed, then saidst thou, and the work of secondary hands, by task transfers from father to his son, strange, point, and new, Doctrine which we would know whence learnt. Who saw when this creation was? Rememberest thou 
thy making while the maker gave thee being? We know no time when we were not as now. No, none before us, self-begot, self-raised by our own quickening power when fatal course had circled his full orb. The birth mature of this our native heaven, ethereal suns, our pisense is our own. Our own right hand shall teach us highest deeds by proof to try who is our equal. Then thou behold whether by supplication we intend address and to be girth thy almighty throne, beseeching or besieging this report, these tidings, carry to thy anointed king and fly ere evil intercept thy flight. All right, I got just uh, another paragraph or so here. He said, and as the sound of waters deep, hoarse murmur echoed to his words applause through the infinite host, nor less for that the inflaming seraph, fearless through alone, though alone, encompassed round with foes, thus answered bold. O alien Nate from God, O spirit accursed, for sake of all good, I see thy fall determined and thy hapless crew involved in this perfidious fraud, contagion spread both of thy crime and punishment. Henceforth no more be troubled how to quit. Oh, good. Just checking the volume, sorry. I see thy fall determined and thy hapless crew involved in this perfidious fraud, contagion spread, both of thy crime and punishment. Henceforth no more be troubled how to quit the yoke of God's Messiah. Those indolent laws will not now be vouchsafed. Other decrees against thee are gone forth without recall. That golden scepter which thou didst reject is now an iron rod to bruise and break thy disobedience. Well, thou didst advise, yet not for thy advice or threats. I fly these wicked tents devoted, least the rot of impending raging into sudden flame. Distinguish not for soon expect to feel his thunder on thy head, devouring fire. Then who created thee, lamenting, learn. When who can uncreate thee, thou shalt know. So spake the seraph, Abdiel, faithful found among the faithless. Faithful only he, among innumerable false, unmoved, unshaken, unseduced, Unterrified, his loyalty he kept, his love, his zeal, nor number, nor example with him wrought to swerve from truth or change his constant mind, though single. From amidst him forth he passed, long way through hostile scorn, which he sustained, superior nor of violence feared aught, and with retorted scorn his back he turned on those proud towers to swift destruction doomed. That's uh, Paradise Lost by John Milton. And Book 5, verses 560 through 905. And so, you know, John Milton also describes and shares how the introduction of Christ as the light, his being given dominion, is what swayed Lucifer and one-third of the angels of the Most High 
to rebel and to go astray and to cause war and division in heaven. And so you see that the story of the war in heaven goes back, as I made mention, to the second day of creation, to actually the first day of creation where we see uh, the light introduced as Christ, and then where it says that uh, night and day in the evening and the morning were the first day. That was the separation of the divisions of light and darkness, good and evil. And that is when they went to war. And that war continued over the course of the first to the second day. And it was on the second day that the earth being destroyed and they were finally banished, cast out and expelled over the bottomless. And then after having cast them out, God recreated the earth, reformed it, and re-established it, and then creating the creatures once more in humanity, they were told to go forth, multiply, and replenish it. Why would you have to replenish something? It's because it had become destroyed. And so we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and onward, that the creation is restored after the destruction of the war in heaven. All right, hope you enjoy the show. God bless all. Good night. (laughs) 